Hello and welcome to Animation Flash Chapter 3, Lesson 4. Now, what's in really interesting about this particular lesson is that the underlying, we're, we're still working with our buttons, we're still signing actions, things along those lines, but the underlying, um, re, or the underlying sample of this is the cars driving across the screen and then the reset button flashing. Now, they don't particularly tell you, but you should be aware right from the get-go. As I look at Flash uh, 3-26, it says Control Test Movie in Flash Prof Professional. So Control Test Movie in Flash Professional. Now, you're going to see it loop over and over again. Now, based off of Lesson 2, when we had those paths, and based off of our um, frames, Someone has gone in here for our sample and made those paths where it does that. Additionally, it made the reset where it flashes. So all these things were previously assigned and created in our Flash program. It gives you the impression that I can just put cars on there. No. Yeah, they work. No, you have to actually do these things. But because of the way it's going about introducing the items, there isn't a... Um, we don't actually work on these paths and we don't actually work on the reset. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go through. Now, the very first thing it, it does is it tells you that you want to create a new layer called Stop Movie. Now, I've already created a new layer called Stop Movie and I want to click Frame 1. Now, there's my Frame 1, so that's how it appears in the very beginning. And I want to make sure my Script Assistant, which is this, after I pull up my Actions frame, is actually shown. So uh, let's see. The way you get that is Windows Actions or F9. You make sure that's shown. Now mine might look a little different because my uh, windows are docked a little differently. So I make sure that this is highlighted. So I'm using, and then the one item I'm looking at it says, click Add a New Item to the Script button. Choose Global Functions Timeline Control. So I'm making sure I'm on one. Frame 1, Stop Movie. I click this, and I choose Global Functions, Time Load, con Timeline Control, and Stop. Now, what it's done is, is embedded in this is actually code that, and, and many of you don't necessarily need to know this, but actually code that defines what Stop is. Stop is a call, and as I look at it, it looks like C++ or C Sharp or one C language, and it calls a function called stop. It sends it no variables. Now, if you're in programming, you pretty much know what I'm talking about. If you're not, don't worry about this. It's just information. But it's basically making a call to a function where it doesn't send arguments that actually stops the entire thing. So that's my first one. Now what I want to do is it says, now go to frame 65. So here's my frame 65. And on the stop movie, so I put a stop on frame 1. And now I'm going to go to frame 65, and I'm going to hit this. And I'm going to hit global functions, timeline control, stop. Now, programming-wise, everybody should, those of you with a little programming knowledge, should be aware that those script functions that it's allowing you to do are predefined programming functions that interact with this particular program. So now what I've done is I've created this, a stop in frame 1 and a stop in frame 65. Now if I come along and I do control, test movie, in Flash Professional, it doesn't do anything. Before it would just lean across, go across the screen. But because I have a stop in the first frame, it does nothing. So now what I have to do is I have to create a method for the user to interact with the image itself to actually create that. And what's going to happen is, is I'm going to click on this and it's actually going to do something. Now, in my particular case, I've already created a lot of this stuff uh, because of I've done it previously, so we're going to redo it. So, I'm going to click, uh, select on frame 1, and then I want to make sure my selection tool is selected, and I want to click on the button or the B signal. Now, you know where it says B signal right here? I now have on release play. All I do is I want to choose global functions, time control, play. So, I'm going to delete this. 
I'm going to choose this so you can actually see what's going on. Global functions. And I want to do timeline control. And I want to push play. Right? So what should happen is now when I click this, I should be able to click that. Now notice I deleted on release. So we'll see what happens. So I'm going to do control, excuse me, commands, test movie in Flash Professional. Now, it doesn't do anything because I haven't specifically told it the on release play. Now, for those of you that are interested in coding or code information, what I'm doing by giving it on release and then play, meaning that I'm associating the term play with when I use that button and I click on that button, it's then, and only then, when I click on the button, it's going to run the play function. So let's try it again. So control, test movie, in Flash Professional, and now it actually runs because what it's doing, it's detecting, okay, I've clicked this, now I want it to actually run the play. This is a, a C function here, I believe it's in C++, and it's called on release, and then it runs that function. So I'm having a, um, well, I guess in this case it would probably be a procedure where it takes in release and then, well, it could be a function, where it takes in release and does something specific and doesn't return anything. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. Once again, if you're not in programming, disregard that. That's just there for those individuals that are working on programming. So um, then I go through now. In their particular case, uh, they're giving a, now we're going to click on, we're going to click the signal button and notice it actually works. We did that. I'm on flash 3-28. Now I want to go to on my timeline and I want to go to frame 65 so I can actually see my reset button. And the reason I do that is in that frame, I'm going to interact with that button. So here we are, my reset button. Now in my reset button itself, I'm going to choose my control where it says on release and I'm going to choose go to and play. So I'm going to go ahead and create my main part of the function associated with on release and squirrely brackets are going to start my function and the squirrely brackets are going to end. I'm going to choose go to so I'm going to hit my global functions, timeline control, go to, I'm going to choose go to and play. And what do I want to push it, put in it? Well, it's going go to and play means go to a specific frame and play. You'll notice it gives you this tooltip text that says go to and play frame. So someone has gone through, once again, this goes on our programming aspect. Someone has gone through, created a function called go to and play. Go to and play expects a criteria of the frame that it's supposed to go to or the argument one so many of you don't need to be aware of this but they've actually created that somewhere they've given the elements to it now the way i did it here it actually put it outside of my on so i have to put it back in my on so it actually runs when it's supposed to so now if i go to control test movie in flash professional on release which is this and now you'll go where it stops and then I have my reset which I've also coded with this script and now it goes back here so they all work together first I coded this to say play it plays there uh, frame 65 is coded with stop I then actually click reset which is coded with go to and play which goes up here and then it goes to here and it plays remember my first frame is stop so it will do stop so it wants to do this animation but I have my stop there that stops it this is my start frame 65 then stops it reset then goes go to and play all right 
So, we've done our go to, and we're going to publish a preview. So, we're going to go to file, and we want to do publish preview, pre preview, preview in HTML. It's going to compile it. All right, this is a Flash player. Boom, now I've published it in HTML, so ideally I can embed this on a website if I wanted to. And it looks super cool. All right, now this concludes um, our lesson four for chapter three. And I want you to once again draw your attention to the car moving across the way. Uh, that it has been created at a different time. So that path of the car has already been created and loaded, and then eventually we'll learn how it all integrates together. Well, thank you very much for your time. Um, we'll move on with Lesson 5, which is importing graphics. And remember, in this particular case, what you should have got out of this section is working with our action panels, working with our frame labels, working with our frame actions, and understanding what that pre-made scripting is actually doing. And if you combine this with our lesson three, where we had the three actions associated with the particular button that we created, remember there was mouse over, which it was working with the gray, and there was on click, which would be our release, which is the green one, and then there would be the, we actually created the space that you interface with. So it's all kind of building from time to time so you can get this overall, you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to take this with our dancing bear example, you could create a dancing bear animation with a path that had it actually moving closer to you as you clicked the button that actually created that sort of dance. And eventually you can learn to integrate music and things along those lines. Uh, but right now this is just the uh, beginnings. So thank you very much for your time. We'll see you in lesson five.